everybody, welcome back. Um, we're very excited today to welcome yet another innovative, creative mind uh, residing in the zoo house. So, uh, Awan Jones from Phenomena, welcome. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this conversation. Nice. We are too. So I'll, I'll let you a little bit introduce yourself or speak of, of Phenomena's mission and products. Um, but you are the co-founder and CEO of the company. Yeah. So we're speaking to the top head. Um, so maybe as an introduction, just to get everybody uh, inside the story, maybe you can just open the door by sharing a little bit of Phenomena in terms of um, what's the mission of Phenomena and maybe speak a little bit of the product and that's going to be kind of our introduction into our conversation. Sure, so Phenomena, we're three co-founders. So there's myself, uh, Basil Salim Jones, our Chief Creative Officer, actually my brother as well, and uh, Shao Miram, who's our Chief Operator. And we've been in this space in AR and VR for you know over a decade. And uh, we created Phenomena three years ago after we sold the last company. Uh, by really wanting to create original uh, virtual reality experiences. And as we created this, 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 this company, what we wanted to do was, was create really something that, 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 that was going to be scalable um, and that was going to be able to, to really kind of like disrupt the market. So a product first and then the content that goes along in it. And so the, our first kind of mandate, our first kind of mission was we looked at the landscape of, uh, of arcades globally. So there's, you know, 4,000 arcades globally. And we said to ourselves, how can we get our content? How can, can we get our platform and all of those 4,000 arcades before moving over to FECs as family entertainment centers? And of course, after that, theme parks. And so we looked, we looked at this landscape and we said to ourselves, Look, all these arcades, they want to have AAA, super good quality, uh, but they're unable to afford it. Uh, because these kinds of really AAA experiences, like the Void, Dreamscapes, and all that stuff, all that stuff costs, you know, a million plus uh, in, in operations costs. So it's very, very expensive to have that kind of stuff. So the mom and pop uh, arcade out there was not going to be able to afford it. So what we did was we created a platform where you can hold our games into it and it's, it's called, basically it's called free roam. So imagine this, this room over here, I put on a headset, you put on a headset and we can see each other and we can experience this, this plane together. And so what we did was with, through software, uh, we created a platform where you can do all this um, and for under $2,000 you're able to get something that's that, 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 that another company would be spending a million bucks for. And so that's really kind of the disruptive uh, um, mission that we had to really get this AAA quantity, AAA quality to all these arcades. That's amazing. So let's say, for example, theoretically, people have to confine in their houses. Yeah. You can throw them in any virtual world that you guys come up with. Well, really, our focus is location-based entertainment, so okay. meaning going to a location uh, to experience it. Uh, but we are having games that are going to be—they're um, going to be at home uh, later this year. So yes, of course, of course, okay. of course. Wow, that's fantastic! Um, of course, being in a pandemic context at the moment uh, where we're speaking, um, for sure, seeing everything that's been happening in terms of social distancing and isolation and, and all the confinement uh, measures, f for sure you must have had a flash of almost you guys having something that's very, very um, before its time almost in terms of solution of entertainment and to bring really enjoyment and uh, captivating experiences to people. Well, you know, I mean, like, uh, I mean, really, the name of the game really is you want to experience something amazing, but you also want to experience it with somebody else. You want to share that experience. And uh, really that, that's kind of the focal point of everything that we do at Phenomena. And also that we, that we like integrated, integrated solutions. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean like a platform that, that any operator can go and just download easily in five minutes, boom, put his credit card in and then have access to our games and also have access to our hardware that goes along with the experiences. Nice, perfect. Let's, so now I feel like we kind of have a, an overview a little bit of Phenomena as a company and your intentions as a, a group of co-founders. Um, can we go back four years ago? Yeah. Uh, you said that you sold 
yes. your first company. Uh, was it with the same co-founders? Yes. So it was with the same co-founders. We had a, we had a, you know our old company, and we're basically we were like you know we were a service company. So for example, we worked with Twitter. We worked with Universal Pictures. We worked with on uh, Fifty Shades Grey Darker. We worked on The Mummy. And we did all the virtual reality experiences. And then one day we were like, look, you know what? This is all great and everything, but we're tired of making other people's experiences. We want to make original intellectual property that's from Quebec and we want to export it globally. That's really what we're, we're all about and what we wanted to do. And I'm like, listen, you know what? I think, I'm, I think we, you know, we had discussions amongst ourselves and then we were like, you know what? We're done with this. So we sold our shares, we got out. Um, and then after that, we started this new company. And here we are right now, uh, a little over two, two years, a little, almost three years um, with what we've built. Nice. Do you remember what triggered that? Because I guess some, did something happen for you guys yes. to say, listen, I think we've been over things here and we need to pivot to something else. Yes. Um, it was when we were working on The Mummy uh, with Tom Cruise. And my brother, is funny, my brother was on the, the plane with Tom Cruise and they were doing the zero, zero gravity stunt, right? So they're going up and down, up and down, up and down. And we had finished shooting it. And, and then after that, we launched it with, um, with uh, IMAX and Universal Pictures at South by Southwest. And, um, and there was rows and rows and rows of people come, wanting to come see this experience. And, uh, and then Basel and I, we, you know, we looked at ourselves and we said, you know what, man, um, there's not enough headsets right now at people's homes. But look at all these people that are lined up to try this experience at a location, location-based entertainment. So I think, that, I think that what we should do is to create, you know, original experiences for location-based entertainment because, you know, people are going to go and want to go and, and experience something remarkable, you know? And think back, think back of, you know, the, the, all the other mediums that came before us. They were done at location first, meaning the radio, right? Radio, you didn't have it at your house. You went to a bar, you went to a restaurant to go listen to the, the hockey game or something like that or the news, right? And then television came and you went to go see the fight at the bar, you know? And then after that, arcades came out for video games. And then after that, you started getting things that were going at home. And that was the big thing with virtual reality where we felt that it's gonna be at home first, excuse me, uh, it's gonna be on location first before it ever gets to at home. And that was the direction, I'm happy we stuck with it. And now our, our experiences are in 20 different countries. So you know, we're really proud about that, uh, working here at Zoo uh, with, our, with our amazing team here in Quebec, Montreal. So you guys started here, but now you're in 20 yeah. International cities? Yes. It's yes. incredible. In yes. what time span from the moment that the IP and the experience was ready to yeah. where we are now? Uh, within, within six months and then it was going super, super fast. We were getting leads and leads and leads coming in and then COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So that happened. Yeah. And you want to talk a little bit about that. I think that COVID has been a very, uh, you know, challenging period that is still happening right now. Um, on the health front, it's had tragic uh, impact. In terms of startups, I think that's where, you know, people kind of went to their pivot weapons and their mindset and all of that was tested. How did Phenomena live that? Yeah, like I said, you know, it was a motherfucker. Like, uh, I don't know what else, how else to explain it. Like, think about this. You're, you go into work, you're hearing all these news about like, about like, you know, people dying and, and this virus spreading and all of a sudden, boom, it's announced pandemic. Well, what does that mean? I thought, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for, for, for over a decade and I thought I kind of, you know, seen it all a little bit, you know, or at least kind of like, you know, understand. And then, but with this, how do you deal with that? You know, what happens? And we were just, we were, we were right about to, to, to launch with uh, our new round of funding, uh, which then gets put, pulled on hold. We have all our, all these leads that are coming in for people that want our games and say, whoa, 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 it's on hold right now because we don't know what's going on. And then after that, we had our wearables that we were working with for the, with our, with our friends over at Cirque du Soleil, they got, they, got, they, got, they got put on hold as well. So everything within, you know, I swear, I think it was 72 hours, everything gets put on hold. And you go home, right, and you can't even go back to work, and you're like, what the fuck do I do? What do I do, you know? And then after that, a week later, you're seeing all these people letting go uh, of their employees and, 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 uh, and, and you know where I'm getting pressure like to, to let go of, 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 our, uh, of our peoples. And I'm like, that, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. Why would I get rid of my talent 
in this period when I need them more than ever before because what's going to happen over the next coming months, I need to have intelligent people to have a discussion together, a creative discussion on what are we going to do for the now and what are we going to do for the tomorrow. I can keep rambling on, so you know, stop me. No, 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 it's all good. It's captivating and, and it's true, right? The collective genius within your company needs to more than ever be at the center of the action to, to figure out how do we make this work and how do we continue to move forward. 100%, you know, I mean, uh, uh, people from the outside tend to look at, uh, at CEOs as, as, as oh, the, 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 the genius who did this thing, the genius, no, that, that doesn't work like that. The one who it's has the all team. the answers. Yeah, it's, that's not true. It's the team, it's the people that you work with that they come up with, with, with something good and then collectively, you know, we come up with a direction and if we're successful from the outside, it looks, it appears as if it's a CEO. It's not the CEO, it's the team. Mm -hmm. And that's great that you speak of that because that's really where I, I wanted to go. I think here at Zoo, we love everything that's, you know, entrepreneur and creativity and, and boldness and innovation. Uh, but something that really interests me uh, specifically is the human adventure inside a startup. I think that, again, in the popular outside view on things, it can look like a smooth ride uh, to the top, but we know that it's completely the opposite, right? Um, within the past three-ish years of phenomena, is there a moment that comes to mind that really was either defining or a huge obstacle that you guys had to figure out how to solve it if this project or this company were to survive? There's many times that's yeah. happened, you know? So it's like, <laughs> choose the one, one in the buffet. Like, exactly. Choose the one where I did not want to try to like, kill myself. Uh, I'm just, just joking. Um, <laughs> I would say, I would say, you know, imagine you're a startup, right? You know, you have limited funds and you're seeing all these other game developing companies that are being bomb bombarding the market with these incredible, incredible games. And you're like, how am I ever going to compete with this? How am I ever going to get to that level? And so, our aha moment really uh, came, actually, it came from an intern. You know, funny enough, funny enough, um, funny enough. So one day this, 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 um, uh, this guy come, walks into my office, he's like, hey, you know, I'd really like to work with you, Awin, I have some great ideas, etc." And he really impressed me, this gentleman, you know, and we, had, we were already working on two other games and they were great. And, um, he came up with this idea of uh, co-location um, experiences with meaning co-location just means like I put on a headset, you put on a headset Connected. and we can see each other. You know what I mean? And uh, and to f and to go back to a uh, to a, a concept that has worked many for many, many years, which is laser tag. And so he said this new headset that's about to come out will be able to do this, 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 this. You know, do you mind if I make a small prototype out of this? And so I was like, you know what? Go right ahead make the smallest prototype and we looked at the prototype and we were like fuck man this is elite this is really amazing and then after that the the team got behind it and then we said to ourselves okay let's take the small little prototype and now let's let's invest it into into a full-fledged game and we did that and really that's really when phenomena took off you know so uh so this is kind of like um my piece of advice never never look down on, on, on juniors, never look down on interns, never look down on those who, who don't have the same experience that you do, because sometimes the brightest ideas are going to come up from those people. Just, you just have to be kind of like uh, aliquot, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So great ideas don't know hierarchy. They don't. They, no really, really don't. they really, really don't. They really, really don't. Yeah. Looking back on the journey, and I'm sure that right now through your mind, a lot of moments are... are are flashing in terms of chapters of the company and the growth and the discovery and product development and all that, um, it, it can definitely get overwhelming to look at everything that's to be built. Personally, intimately, you as the CEO, as one of the leaders of this company, do you have any go-to uh, methods or any routines or anything to deal with with yourself when you feel overwhelmed? Yes. Is there anything specifically? I do it every day. Yeah? Yeah, I do it every day. So I've been, uh, I've been practicing mixed martial arts for 18 years. Okay. So I do uh, boxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu and wrestling. Um, and I, you know, no matter what, I finish work, 
I finish work, you know, at six, I go, I train at seven, two hours every single day, and then I go back home and I get back to work. You know what I mean? But that, that moment, that moment when I'm in the ring, when I'm fighting my opponent, I, never, I don't think about my job, I don't think about all the problems I have, I don't think about the million and one things that I did wrong during the day, and I'm in that present moment, uh, battling it out, and hope, hopefully I, I, don't get, uh, I, I don't get too beaten up by these, these little 25-year-olds, you know? So uh, that, that's my, um, that's, that's my go-to, um, and that keeps me sane. Nice, nice, so just complete disconnection from everything. And it's something just for you, by you, and that's it. I can assure you, when someone's when someone's trying to kick you and punch you in the face, that you are in the that you are in that present moment. I can assure you, my friend, like you like you would not believe. And everything else, all the other problems, everything else, it disappears. And that because of that time where it disappears, it recharges your battery enough to be able to go and deal with the ne the problems the next day. You know, and for other people, some people it's yoga. Some people it's dancing, you know, but I find that the, those people who are able to do these things, they have longevity uh, as an entrepreneur. They have longevity in creativity. They have longevity in innovation. Because, you know, those who, those who are just going to like drink themselves stupid, you know what I mean? Like at one point you're burning the, the, the candles on both ends and you know what I mean? Like, ça marche plus. Yeah. yeah. So I like the personal adventure within a startup. I think that um founders bring to the table who they are you know it's very raw in terms of what spills out into the culture of the company and uh, would you say that your self-awareness has gotten sharper and sharper throughout the projects and the years 100 but it's not just me it's also it's also my my two partners basil and, and charles um their self-awareness develops and my self-awareness develops and we can we can feed off of each other and i know you know i know when i'm deviating and i gotta bring someone back and i know when i'm like oh let's go and then they're like and charles is like no no, no you're, when you're going off the deep end we're not going to buy that hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment that's insane we're not going to do that you know what i mean so um yeah nice so the the trio is really thinking is very complementary yeah within that small group right and yeah so and you know i mean like there's the day-to-day -day and then there's non the day-to-day -day. so right the day-to-day -day we're working on it i don't but on fridays we'll get together and we'll have supper and we'll just discuss and and when you discuss with your partners on a, on you know when you have a little bit of wine a little bit of food a little bit of this and that you know what i mean you come up i find that you can you can kind of take you can kind of take a view of your of your company in a macro level mm -hmm. and i find that that is that really helps nice nice it's great to hear it's great i can almost visualize you guys around the table with a nice glass of wine just hashing things out oh, and, yeah. and, and pushing yeah and if it ever gets too bad like in my, my brother and i start insulting each other too much i can always threaten to call my mother Yes. And that calms everything down every, very qu every quick. Um, <laughs> drop him a man. <laughs> the family tool. Exactly, 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 exactly. Speaking of family. Yeah. Um, we're in the zoo home. We, the entire team at Zoo is working very hard to make this a home. Yes. For me, a home is a safe space where you can be yourself, explore, try different things. Um, it's a home of creatives and entrepreneur and, and, and bold people. What does it mean for you, the power of having a space where creatives get together? You know, creatives, that's what they do, right? They'll just, they, they, they're unable not to come up with ideas. It's spontaneous. It just pops in their head. So I know this sounds, this may sound silly to, to somebody else, but I, I'm pretty sure you'd understand. I'm talking about like, you meet someone else or another creator from another company or somebody who's working at Zoo and you're at the, you know, you're, you're grabbing a coffee and you're speaking about this thing that you're doing and they're speaking about this thing. They're like, hey, did you think about this thing? Did you talk to that person over there that's doing this thing? And then after that, it gels and like your, 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 your neurons fire up and you're able to connect new things that you were not thinking about before. And that's the point of creativity. When, when someone says, you know, you're creative, sometimes, sometimes people think you're, you're a good artist, you're a good painter, whatever. That's not what a creative is. A creative is somebody who can take two things that are seamlessly unrelated and come up with new ways of doing them, you know? And that is, that is, that's a sign of a brilliant creative is to be able to think, come up with things that are unrelated and make them into something new together. 
Steve Jobs, I think, was the one saying, among others, that a creative is somebody who knows how to connect dots. And I think that's that's exactly what you what you just said. So, yeah, and, I, and, and the power of having different people around the table bringing different angles, I think, make you see those dots in in their whole three dimensional um, potential as well. I agree. Nice. Yeah. It's really interesting. One of the things that that we're happy about uh, inside the zoo space um, is that we're interacting with uh, like like your team a lot of creators but that are very technology driven yes you know so very very focused on that and and one tool that that we have now that we're very excited to explore is the the telus uh, 5g lab upstairs um, there's a lot of excitement misconception about 5g it's not a clear subject because it's so new and, and avant-garde yeah. um, as we are speaking of it what's 5g for you i guess being very technology driven um, vr it must be in your realm of thoughts so for me the, the there's only one word that comes to mind when i think of 5g and that's instant you know what i mean like you know th you know how when you're on your phone or whatever sometimes things take time to to load or this or that for me in my mind 5g is instant and when i can when i can think of instant in terms of like virtual reality or augmented reality or any of these new mediums where you know what i mean you want to put two things together that may not be to, may not be in the same in the same environment that to me is like super exciting you know and then after that when i hear about people talking bad about 5g or anything it reminds me of like uh what was it in the in the 1800s, they thought that like, if you went past 18 kilometers an hour, or sorry, 28 kilometers an hour in a train, that your brain would melt or something like that. It was, it's, you look it up, it's pretty crazy, you know? So like, let's, let's you know, like, you know, slow down a little bit and l l l look at the science. I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be okay in terms of this 5G, 5G stuff. Yeah, and, and what's, how will Phenomena use 5G? I can't tell you that. Yes. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me? <laughs> I can I can tell you that um, I'm. You know you talked about you talked about I'm at your house. I'm at my house. You're at your house. Yeah. Uh, why can't we all be in the same plane together? Like a lot like a Ready Player One. You know what I mean? Not what Facebook is doing, but like something something of those those those, those that were we're really in in a whole universe together. And I think that that is really that's really the end goal when. Um, when you basically you walk into this room, you put on that headset and you're in any world that you want to be, but not just yourself. Because VR, when you, when you go into VR and you don't see or interact with anybody else, it's very lonely, you know? But if you can be with your friends, if you can be with your family and have an adventure together in a, in, in a room, uh, that's really exciting. That is really, really exciting, you know? And then after that, when you come up with the creativity, sometimes that's, it's endless. It's endless. For sure, it sounds like the future, right? Wherever you are, you're with everyone. I think that's a notion that is very uh, exciting and scary and stimulating um, that the, the frontiers are gonna slowly disappear in terms yes. of creative entertainment. I agree. That's very exciting. I agree. I have to thank you for being so generous with sharing all of that. It's great for us and for everybody to kind of have a glimpse inside a phenomena and how optimistic you guys are looking at the future. I do, and thank you very much for, for having me. I really appreciate this. I thank everybody at Zoo, uh, you know, from from Guillaume, Noor, yourself, Guy La Liberté, or Ev, like everybody who's, who's working on this stuff, to be able to have people who are investing money into uh, startups who want to create intellectual property to export them globally and make our province rich. That you need to be a real visionary and someone's got balls who's going to put the money on the table and i you know i thank everybody that's behind that it's amazing to hear before we before um, we end this conversation i wanted to invite you to a little game or a little light questioning round that sure. we call the fire questioning cool. round sure. so i'll throw a bunch of quick questions at you and you just answer what comes uh, on top of mind okay. okay perfect so let's start this do you have wisdom from life or from books? Both. Both. Do you follow the rules or do you take risks? I've never followed the rules. 
extrovert or introvert? None. I'm, 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 I'm in between. I'm introvert at home where it makes me feel comfortable. And when I need to be extrovert um, to, to, to like close sales, to be able to create new connections with people, to be able to make my projects go forward, to have this interview, to go on stage, then I'll be the extrovert. But it's not my nature. Nice. Is there a quote that has been following you everywhere for a long time or something that really um, triggered something in you? Yes. Yes. It's, uh, it's something my dad told me, and I think it's Bob Marley, um, who said, you can please some people sometime, you can't please people all the time. You can please some people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. Meaning, like, your ideas, just believe in your ideas. Some people are going to be like, wow, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And forget the haters. Who gives a, who gives a shit about those guys? You know, or girls. Just, you know, focus on the things that you believe in, uh, because you can't please everybody. Mm -hmm. Nice. So my, follow, my following question, what's the best piece of advice you ever got? The best piece of advice I ever received? I'm not sure I want to put this on camera, but between us, I'm an immigrant. So, you know, since a very young age, I was told, you know, like, uh, as an immigrant, you need to work twice as hard to be able to, to just to just kind of like, I mean, this is, don't forget, I'm, I'm 41 years old, born in 1979, you know what I mean? So things have changed now, but back then, you know what I mean? It was hard, you know, it was, it was, it was hard and racism was, was, was really, really kind of in your face, you know? And, uh, and being an immigrant, it's, 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 it was not easy. And so I always had the mentality of like, you gotta work twice as hard, twice as hard, all the time, twice as hard. And that stuck with me over the years and, um, it's not so true now, but I can assure you it was true a while, uh, a, a while ago. Nice. What's the worst piece of advice? <laughs> the worst piece of advice I can I ever received was from people who, the so-called experts, who said, we need to bring people of experience into this. Da, 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 da. L let me tell you something. Innovation is something new. If there was someone who had experience in this specific thing that was innovative, it would not be innovative. So you know what? Work with the people that, 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 that are passionate. Work with the people that are, that are willing to put everything on the line to make this work because those are the ones who are gonna get you there. The people of experience, they're going to limit your growth. Thanks. Could, can you share one book that has been important to you? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, how to win friends and influence people. A nice, a classic. And last question, um, complete the sentence. At the end, it all comes down to? Creativity. Creativity, well said. What's coming for Phenomena? What's on the horizon, next steps, challenges that you guys are, are facing? What can we look forward to? The next, the next really the next challenges that, 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 that we're facing right now is we just, we're just hoping when this pandemic is going, to, uh, is going to end so that after that we can really streamline all of our experiences and, and get out to, to as many locations as possible um, and have, you know, homegrown uh, IP that's, 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 that's all over the world. That's really, that's, I just can't wait for this pandemic to be over, you know what I mean? But until, until then, until then we're, we're working on our craft, we're working on our experiences, much like, much like you guys, you know? working on the master plan of when this thing is over to have the best thing over to have to have that thing that once it comes out that people are like oh my god this is incredible i can't wait to, to, to talk about this to my friends to share it with my family and, 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 and you know get that out there that's really the name of the game so nice and people who are watching listening um, and who are captivated by everything that you're saying, where, where can they find you on the internet, social media? Where can they find Phenomena? Yeah, well, my name is Owen Jones, and I've never met another Owen. Actually, like, you, like on Twitter, it's Twitter dot like slash Owen. So like you can really find me easily on, on, on Facebook or on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Uh, and I actually do answer my emails and my messages. So if you have any questions, if you're, if you're a, a person who has an idea for a startup and you, you want a little bit of, of guidance or you want some advice or anything, shoot me an email, uh, shoot me a message. I'll be happy to help you. Nice. And Phenomena, you guys have a website, uh, social media. Yeah. So thephenomena.co. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. 
Super. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks. Amen. All right, cool. Hey, thanks everyone. So um, again, this was a great conversation for us to allow you guys to, um, to explore and discover creative, bold souls that are inside the zoo house. Um, as ever, our mission at Zoo is to gather, help and promote creative entrepreneurs in the entertainment industry. Um, and we will gladly continue to do so with amazing people like you. So thank you for your time and your time and we'll see you very soon.